Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at the different types of storage options we have and how we can run the containers on different volumes along with the hands-on demo to persist data for a database container. So we looked at the volumes storage, the bind amounts, and also the TMPFS mounts. In today's session, we are diving into a critical aspect of containerization, Docker networking. Understanding how Docker handles networking is key to building multi-container applications. We will break this down into two parts. First, we will explore the three default networks Docker creates for you. And then we will see exactly how containers use these networks to talk to each other. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. Let's start with the basics. When you install Docker, it automatically creates three networks for you out of the box. You can see them by running this command docker network ls. So here, let me run this command. And here you can see I'm able to see my three default networks. So as you can see, we have three networks. So we have the uh, uh, bridge network, we have the host network, and then we have the none network. Each serves a different purpose. Let's examine each one in detail. The first and most important is the bridge network. So this is the default network that containers connect to if you don't specify a network when you run them. So for example, here, when I run this command docker run hyphen dit and let's say container A and let's say Alpine. So when I run this command and if I don't specify the network, then I am running the container in the bridge network by default. Think of this as a virtual network or a private network switch inside your Docker host. Containers attached to this bridge can communicate with each other and Docker provides a mechanism for them to communicate with the outside world and vice versa through a technology called network address translation or NAT. So let me show you the details of this. So let me inspect this uh, network. So we will run this, come on, let me cancel that. So Docker network inspect. And uh, here I should be able to see the details of the network. Now you can notice a few things here. First thing you can notice is the subnet. So the subnet here is 172.17.00 slash 16. This means any container on this default bridge network will get an IP address in this range. And the gateway is 172.17.0.1. This is the IP address of the Docker host inside this virtual network. It's the container's door to the outside world. Let's see this in action. So uh, let's say we will run, so docker run hyphen dit and uh, let's give this a name so let's call this a uh, bridge container we will do the port mapping and the image name so this should uh, create a, a container for me and this one is by default running in our bridge network so if i inspect this container you can see here the network, it says it is using the bridge network. So in summary, the default bridge network provides isolation. Containers here are isolated from those on the host network or other custom networks. Then outbound connectivity. So by default, containers can reach to the internet via NAT and then inbound port mapping. So to reach a container from your host machine or the outside world, you must explicitly publish its port using the hyphen P flag, which is what we um, did over here. So this, this is what uh, we call it as publishing your ports. This creates a firewall rule that maps port 8080 on your host to port 80 on your container. Next up is the host network. This one is much simpler, but less isolated. When you run a container on the host network, it effectively bypasses Docker's network isolation completely. The container uses the host's own networking stack directly. 
This means the container does not get its own private IP address. If your container runs a web server on port 80, that service is immediately available on port 80 of the host's IP address without any need for the hyphen P flag. So let's see this in action. So here, let's say I will um, run this docker run hyphen hyphen rm hyphen d and now i'm uh, telling that i want to use the host network so this is how we tell uh, if you want to use any other network other than your bridge network and then uh, let's say uh, we want to use nginx and done now if i open up a browser on this host machine and go to um, if i hit the ip address i will see the nginx welcome page no port mapping is needed so here let's say i'll do a curl uh, local host and you can see i'm able to see the output for your nginx and all of this can be done without any port mapping this is because my host network is bypassing the docker's network isolation and it is using the host's own networking stack to run the container now, the big advantage here is performance. There's no NAT overhead. The big disadvantage is lack of isolation. You can't run two containers that both want to use the same port like port 80 because they would both be fighting for the host port 80. Use this network driver with care. Finally, we have the NUN network. This is the simplest of them all. A container starting with the NUN flag has no networking interfaces. It only has a loopback interface. So it can't communicate with other containers or the outside world. It's completely isolated. Then why would you ever use this? It's for extreme security sensitive workloads or for containers that only perform internal computations and have no need for any network access whatsoever. So the command would be docker run hyphen it hyphen hyphen rm and then here I'm telling that I want to use the none network, the name of the image and then the command so that I can connect to the container. So here I'm inside the uh, container and let me run this command and you can see I'm able to see only the loop back address and no other information is available and uh, even if i try connecting to let's say google.com it has no way to reach google.com because there is no network whatsoever attached to this so that's the none network in a nutshell you will have no network access associated with the container okay so we have our networks now how do containers actually talk to each other the magic happens through two main docker features automatic DNS and IP based communication. While the default bridge network allows communication, it has a major limitation. Containers can only talk to each other by IP address. There is no built in name resolution. For example, uh, let me exit from here. And uh, so here, if you see network LS, so this is a bridge network. Let's create a couple of networks here. So hyphen DIT and let's call this as Alpine one and then the name of the image. So if I'm not specifying the network flag, that means uh, I want to run this container by default in the bridge network. Let me start one more container. So now I have two containers and both these containers are running in the same bridge network. So let me show you. So docker inspect bridge and here you can see I have alpine 1 and then alpine 2. Now let's connect to or let me do this docker exec hyphen it. Uh, let me connect to alpine 1 and then the interpreter. Um, sorry there's an underscore and uh, let me run this command let me exit from here and uh, do the same thing in alpine uh, 2 and uh, if config so this is alpine 2 ip address and this is alpine 1 ip address now let me try pinging using the ip address and you can see i'm able to connect but if i try connecting using the uh, container name which is the host name 
you will see this will not work this is because the default bridge network has the limitation it has no built-in name resolution for modern microservices this is a deal breaker you don't want your front end container to have to know the ip address of your back end container especially since ip addresses are dynamic the solution to this is to create your own user defined bridge network so we will create a new network here so docker network create and let's call this as my app network and this will create a new uh, bridge network for us so here there is my bridge network so a uh, user defined bridge network provides two crucial advantages over the default one one is automatic dns resolution so containers on the same network can resolve each other's names to their ip addresses and the second is better isolation it's a clean isolated network just for your applications stack let's see this in action we will create two more containers running on our custom network in this network so docker run hyphen dit and then here i will use the uh, network flag and i will say that uh, i want to use this network let's uh, give this a name uh, alpine 3 and then the image name let me start one more container so now i should have four alpine containers uh, these two are running on the default bridge network the top two are running on the new uh, bridge network that we have created. Now let's get a shell inside one of this container and try to ping the other container. So let's say I will connect to Alpine 3. So docker exec hyphen it Alpine 3 and let's say bin sh. And here if I try doing a ping to Alpine 4, you can see I am able to connect using the host name or the DNS name. So this is where your Docker's built-in DNS resolution automatically resolves to the IP address. This is incredibly powerful. Your application code can simply use the container name as the host name. The other way will also uh, work. So let me connect to Alpine 4 and uh, we will try pinging uh, Alpine uh, 3 and you can see I'm able to connect. It works perfectly in both directions. This automatic service discovery is the foundation for connecting web frontends to database backends, API gateways to microservices and then so on. But how is this happening? So uh, let's inspect this particular container. So docker inspect and if you see here this DNS names it is null. So this is the limitation of your default bridge network. Um, it does not use the Docker's built-in DNS resolution. So this is where we create our own custom bridge network, which allows us to use uh, Docker's built-in DNS resolution. So here, if I inspect this, you can see here the DNS names, and that's how we are able to uh, talk to the containers using the DNS name. So let's recap what we have learned so far. Docker provides three default networks, the bridge network, host network, and the none network. For basic communication, the default bridge works, but it requires manual port publishing and lacks DNS. For multi-container applications, you should always create a user-defined bridge network. On a user-defined bridge, containers can communicate seamlessly using their containers name as host names, thanks to Docker's built-in DNS. And that brings us to the end of this session. In the next session, we will talk more about creating custom networks, connecting containers to networks, inspecting networks, and also setting up a multi-container application using a custom network and DNS. If you found this session helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and let me know in the comments section if you have any queries. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next session.